Have you ever used vintage lenses on your digital camera? If you have not, I will give you four reasons why you should. Hi there, my name is Peter Forsgaard and I am an Olympus visionary and a professional photographer from Helsinki, Finland. And before we start talking about why you should try vintage lenses, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit that bell so you get notified when there is a new video online. My channel is all about you getting to be a better photographer and also about Olympus gear. And this time some vintage gear, which is not Olympus, at least not all of it. But let's start. I do have several vintage lenses that I use every now and then, and here are some of them uh, displayed here. And uh, what I have is uh, I have a 500 millimeter mirror lens, which looks like this. It has a bit different uh, front element. And also this has a fixed aperture f8 and it's a 500 millimeter. So the angle of view of a, uh, a 500 millimeter lens on a micro four thirds body is 1000 millimeters. Very interesting lens. Then I have a couple of uh, Olympus uh, OM lenses. The other one is back there in the cabinet which it's his M mount lens. And this one is OM mount. It's the same mount, but it's a different name because they changed the name because the original OM camera was actually M1 and then they had to change it to be OM1. Then I have uh, this uh, Planar or Carl Zeiss Planar, Planar 1.7. It's a 50 millimeter lens and this I used to use a lot for my street portraits way back in the in the early days of digital when I had a different different kind of camera. Then there is my first 50 millimeter lens. It's a Cosinon 50 millimeter f f2 lens and this is the first it was actually the kit lens in my my Cosina CS1 which I bought when I was I think I was 16 when I got my fourth DSLR and then uh, I have an interesting lens one of the first lens babies that was made lens baby 3g but unfortunately I don't have a uh, proper adapter for this one so I can't show you any photos taken with this but I, I'll, I'll make a separate video about about this lens and then I have the bokeh um, king or queen or whatever is the Helios uh, let's look what it is for real no wait a minute it's right here it's Helios uh, 44m and it's a 58 millimeter f2 lens and this is really heavy it's it's Full metal, full glass. It's really heavy lens, made in, in in Soviet Union way back, and this is a very very good lens, and, and I, I really like it. It's a bit a bit heavy, and so but holding the camera properly it works. And then I have two Leica lenses, a Elmar, a nine centimeter f4 lens. Yes, nine centimeters, and then. I do have this uh, Sumicron 40 millimeter Sumicron C 40 millimeter f2.0 lens, which I. Uh, belong to my wife's late grandfather and I loaned this from from my wife's father to test this for for this video but uh, let's continue do you have vintage lenses and if you do what vintage lenses do you have please let me know in the comments down below to attach these vintage lenses to your modern DSLR is not a big deal only thing you need is an adapter and for micro four thirds you can get any adapter almost for any lens that was ever made. And that's why Micro Four Thirds is a perfect system for testing vintage lenses and using vintage lenses. And I have a separate video about uh, adapters and how to use vintage lenses. And you can watch it from there. But why should you use vintage lenses when you can get a modern lens for your camera? It doesn't matter what camera you have, you got a big selection of lenses. Let me tell you those four things. Why? And the reason number one. Vintage lenses can be really inexpensive. Like this, for example, the Helios 44M 58mm f2.8, uh, I mean, sorry, two f2 lens, is only 69 euros at the moment in Camera Store, which is a Finnish uh, dealer that uh, has lots and lots of vintage gear for sale. And they provide and send all over the world. So if you're interested in, go check out their, their website. This is not sponsored by them. It's just a big fan of, of Camera Store. And yeah, one more thing about the vintage lenses that I have. Most of them are bought from that store. But I will put a link in the description of this video so you can 
go and see. And as I said, it's lenses are really expensive and getting a cheaper lens could be a good decision. Modern lenses are much more expensive, like this 45 millimeter f1.2 lens, which is about 1300 euros uh, at the time when I was making this video. And of course, that's a lot of money. And if you want to try something like around this focal length, you might want to buy a cheaper version. As I said, the Helios uh, lens is about 69 euros at the moment. It comes at a store. So that could be an option to get one of those and see if that uh, focal length is good for you and then get this lens if, if you see that it is something that is for you. And reason number two, it's a good way of testing different focal lengths because you don't have to put a lot of money in a new lens. Let's say that you want to have a ultra wide angle or really long telephoto lens and not really sure if that's something that you actually need or want to have. And you know, getting a cheap vintage lens with a particular uh, focal length might help you make the decision. Use that for a little while and, and then if that is something that you really need, then get a more expensive modern lens if, if you want. And of course, you know, you can always resell to someone the your vintage lens with most likely with the same price you got it so you don't lose anything you gain i think that's a that's a really good reason to to try and see if if something is good for you before we get into the next reason why you should try vintage lenses let's look at what are the main differences between modern lens and a vintage lens and the first biggest thing is of course that most uh, uh, vintage lenses are manual focus because you know autofocus came came later and all these lenses are before that and uh, using manual focus there might be some problems of course if you're not used to it and because you you can't really see from your viewfinder if the image is exactly sharp where you want it to be and and that can cause a problem but for example, in Olympus cameras, you have focus peaking and magnify. And I have a video about that, how to use those. So if you have trouble manual focusing your with your Olympus camera, then you might want to watch that video. That will help you a lot. And as a bonus tip for Olympus users, assign focus peaking or magnify to a button. It will help a lot for you to uh, focus if you're not used to focusing in manual focus. And the sharper the lens is, the better you see the focus picking colors. And remember, you can have different colors. I, I, if I remember correctly, it is red, yellow, black and white. So you can change the color according to your subject. Well, that's a good tip if you're not very uh, good with uh, manual focusing. Or let's say not good, but you're not that used to doing that. But um, I'll continue to make some images. I have the Helios here right now. Okay, there is an interesting ship. Let's see if we can grab that. Because this is an old harbor, there's still a harbor across the, what do you call that, across the water. And then the second thing is that most uh, vintage lenses have an aperture ring. With modern lenses, you change the aperture from the body, but with most vintage lenses, you change it from the lens. And of course there are some modern lenses too that have aperturing, but it's not that common anymore. It used to be the way, only way to change the aperture way back when these lenses were new. Let's see, uh, what else do we have? Yeah, about manual focus. One thing, uh, it will slow you down. That's also an advantage of that because for some reason shooting digital makes you shoot in a rush. I don't know why because there's no reason for that. It just somehow the, uh, the gear that you have will make you, uh, you know, be too fast. But with manual focus, it will slow you down and you might think more of your image and think your composition, think your, well, everything in, in the image. And that's why also it's a wise thing to use manual focus lenses. And remember, if you have a Olympus M Zuiko lens, which has an MF clutch, with that, it's really easy to switch from autofocus to manual focus. And then also vintage lenses have this uh, depth of field scale. So you can see how far the depth of field is with different uh, apertures. And then there is an interesting fact about this um, aperture scale or the depth of field scale. Now, it was invented by a Finnish photographer Vilho Setala in 1927. 
what happened is that he figured it out how how the depth of field works with different uh, uh, focal distances and he uh, marked his Leica lens with that scale and when he sent it to re for repair in to or to Germany Leica copied that and what they did they added that to their lenses next year in 1928 and uh, what happened is that uh, the only or I don't know if you can say only the thing was that then Leica asked Vilho Setela to travel to their factories and gave him one lens for that invention so that was the fun fact from Finland what is your opinion on vintage lenses should you use them or not I think you should but what is your opinion and the third reason is the character of the lenses. Modern lenses are really sharp and really good quality lenses and they make a perfectly sharp images, but a really sharp digital image can lack some character and the lenses are a big part of that. Using vintage lenses you can have a totally different look to your images. They have character. All those lenses are totally different. You get really old lenses that has certain character and then you have a maybe a newer vintage lens or some other manual focus lens that has totally different character and I think that's something really uh, things that you should try because uh, that gives you a, a lot more and the pro possibilities of different lenses that's endless there are like millions of different brand lenses or not different brand but different type of lenses in the market and as I said those lenses are quite cheap and inexpensive so there is a lot of possibilities for you to try also different type of lenses. Mirror lenses are quite special as you can see it looks a bit different from a normal lens and also they have a fixed aperture and this one has f8 like most mirror lenses that I've seen has aperture f8. I don't know if there are any mirror lenses that have a different aperture I've really never never really thought about that or checked if there is. Let's see what else. Yeah the front element as you see was different and because of the front element is a bit different, the bokeh is a donut, which looks pretty nice. It's a bit unusual and that's why the character of this lens is really interesting. So if you have a chance to test one, I recommend to test a mirror lens. It's an interesting lens. The look and feel of the image is totally different compared to modern perfect lenses. And let's look at some of the images that I took with my vintage lenses for this video. As you saw how different those uh, images were when it comes to the character of the of the image and that because of the lens and that's what I really like about vintage lenses that they all have different characters and that was actually way back in the in the early days when photography was invented and portrait studios were really popular people might have their portrait taken when they bought a new hat that was the way the portrait studios could uh, differ from each other having different lenses they even had lenses that had a bubbles inside they might bought a new camera but they still used the lens for for many many years just because of the character and that was their signature style that was part of that was the lens and that's really interesting and that that's that's uh still could be a thing for you if you if you like certain vintage look in a, in a certain lens you could use that and, and make a style out of out of that and i think that's really interesting and one more reason to use a vintage lens. And before we get into the next reason why you should try vintage lenses, a few words about the image quality itself. I talked about the character of the lens already, but of course you want to have sharp images too, because unsharp images most likely doesn't look that good. And for example, this uh, uh, 50 millimeter Olympus OM system 50 millimeter of f 1.8 lens does not give you a very good result if you have with the wide open f 1.8 but stopping down to 5.6 the quality is marvelous so same thing goes with the vintage lenses that goes with any lens stopping down a bit will make the image quality better and 
the same thing is with all my vintage lenses that stopping down a bit will make a bit better image quality. Yeah, there's one thing that we always have to remember is that these are not weather sealed lenses. So that's, uh, that's something to consider because it starts to rain and I need to go back to my computer and see how, how these images came out and how the video came out. But I will be back here. See you in a minute. Yeah, it looks good. And now that it has stopped rain again, let's go back outside. Ah, there's a lot of construction going on here, and it's uh... ah, it's a bit too long for this. I, you know, when I have a 50 millimeter, which is actually 100 millimeter lens, then it feels to be a bit too long for me. But uh... let's see. There's a this. Uh post box here that that you probably seen in the beginning of the video let's try to get an image of that all right let's see how that comes out and the fourth reason i think photography should be fun and using vintage lenses it can give you the fun back to your photography if you feel that you don't having enough fun so testing different lenses can really make your uh, images a lot better and when you're having fun making images it usually also will make your images to become better. Oh, whoa, what a, it's pretty windy here and it's kind of, it's actually quite warm, but the wind is a bit cold. So having this is um, not the wisest idea. I should have had my hoodie. The time that I don't have my hoodie, it gets cold and it actually starts raining in a minute. But try vintage lenses to have some fun in your photography, if you feel that you're not having fun. And here are the more videos for you to watch. There's a video about the 500 millimeter uh, mirror slash reflex lens. And then there is a video about uh, how to use vintage lenses on your Olympus camera. I hope you enjoyed the video and yeah, check out those and see what's that. Is there anything for you? And try the vintage lenses. Get a hold of you and give it a try. It's a lot of fun. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.